hello welcome back this is topic three uh, part 3.3 electrons and bright line spectrum and I just showed you an opening of a fireworks show which I'm sure we've all been to and I'm sure you never sat at your fireworks show and thought about all of the beautiful bright line spectrum that you were seeing as uh, you know electrons were getting excited um, from the, uh, from being used in fireworks displays but that is you actually have experience with this phenomenon so today we're going to explain what causes each element's bright line spectrum we've been talking about atoms so what do we know about atoms at this point we know that we have a small dense positive nucleus and that it contains protons which are positively charged and neutrons that are neutral or have no charge there's a large space that's occupied by electrons that are negative and this is the the planetary model Bohr's model and inside we have our protons and neutrons so where do we find the electrons and what happens if we add energy to an atom the electrons can absorb or release energy and move to different orbitals if you have orbitals that are close to the nucleus that means that they are at a lower energy the closer to the nucleus the lower the energy level as they get further away they are at higher energy levels so the orbitals that are further from the nucleus have higher energy closer has lower energy and here's a model that shows the nucleus and each layer um, each shell n equals one n equals two n equals three and so on and each of these is able to hold a set number of electrons our first orbital can hold two then eight and so on okay the ground floor of a building where do we find that that would be at the bottom or lowest level so the ground state of an electron is when it the electrons are at the lowest level that they can occupy okay so the ground state is what i'm going to show you in a few minutes on the on the periodic table and the electrons in the ground state will have the least amount of energy so what is the charge of the nucleus and what is the charge of an electron and what do we know because of this so in the excited state that means electrons have absorbed energy through heat, light, or electricity, and they move out in an excited state to a higher level. This makes the electron unstable, and it wants to be stable. It wants to be at the ground state. So the electrons move to lower orbitals and release energy as soon as they're able. Okay, so if they get excited and, and move outwards when they absorb energy and then they try to get back to the stable state the ground state and when they do that they release energy so this is a little diagram showing the ground and excited state so your ground state we have our um, nucleus here a positive nucleus and our electron that is negative so of course the electrons are attracted towards the center which is positive since they are negative and positively charged in the ground state you would be at the lowest possible le uh, level and if it becomes excited and absorbs heat, it will move out to an outer layer. It will expand out from the center. And then when it tries to return to the ground state, it has to release that energy. And it does so in the form of light. And you actually learned about this in Earth science, the bright line spectrum. And we talked about this in terms of looking at um, stars and seeing what type of elements um, the stars are made up of. So this is how this happens. So now we're going to add to what we know. So when electrons gain energy, they jump energy levels. They move out from the center, jumping energy levels, and they become excited. Do they stay like this forever? No, they want to be stable. So they return back to the ground state and emit or release or give off that energy. They have to get rid of the energy they gained to return back to their stable ground state energy that they use uh, that they give off in this case is in the form of light each element gives off different colors of light and this is called the bright line spectrum so we're going to break out the spectroscopes i'm going to go grab them from earth science and we're going to take a look at the bright line spectrum that are produced by different elements and by the sun and by the lights in our room so each element has its own special bright line spectrum, which I like to call it its own personal barcode. Each element also gives off its own personal uh, barcode, which we call a bright line spectrum. And this is what they look like. So if you look at sodium through a spectroscope, 
we can look through a gas tube that's lit up where electricity is passing through the gas tube, look through the spectroscope, and you will see that sodium only gives off one yellow line. And you can identify what elements you're looking at based on its personal bright line spectrum. Mercury, you could see, has two orange, two green, then another green, okay, two light blue, and then we get into the purples. And the spacing in between each of these lines is particular to that particular element. It is special to that element. Okay, no two have the same exact um, spectrum. So lithium and here's hydrogen. And you can see each of them has its own special code. So which elements would make up the unknown? So if you're looking at elements A, B, C, and D, and these are our known spectrum for those elements, and this is your unknown sample, and you're trying to figure out what elements are contained in the unknown sample. You could take a look at the different um, barcodes here, and you could see this one doesn't quite line up, and these two lines do not exist in the unknown sample, so we do not have element A. Element B, let's see, it looks like we've got this line here, and we have this line. So element B is in the sample. Element C, we have the two lines together, and we have this single line here, and we have this one. So element C is also in our, in our sample. And element D, we do not have its bright line spectrum contained in our unknown. So this unknown would consist of elements B and C, and we can identify them by the particular code given off by the bright line spectrum. So here's some Regents questions to help us practice. Which principal energy level of an atom contains an electron with the lowest energy? So if you consider in our um, planetary model, energy level 1, it's called N equals 1, and this is energy level 2. Okay, They always get numbered from the center out. And then we've got N equals 3. Look at my beautiful circles. And N equals 4. Which one has the lowest energy? Okay, so remember, the closer it is to the nucleus, the lower the energy. As you get further out, it has higher energy levels. So in this case, n equals 1 would be the lowest energy. What is the total number of electrons in the second energy shell of a calcium atom in the ground state? So I want to bring your attention to the periodic table. So if you take out your periodic table, um, note here on the bottom left corner in our key, it says this is your electron configuration. In the bottom left corner of each element's symbol, it shows us the uh, electron configuration uh, or the shells that each um, electron is contained in with for that element. And you'll notice there's a pattern to them, which we'll talk about um, more. But if you would look in the corner here, and this tells you how many energy levels the element is in, and the electrons are in for that particular element and how many electrons are in each shell. So if we look here at beryllium, it's got 2-2. Two two. That means it's got 2 in the first shell and 2 in the second shell. Um, N equals 1, okay, our first energy level, is able to hold 2 electrons. That's the total it's able to hold. Your second level is able to hold 8 electrons. And our third is able to hold 18 electrons. But most importantly, what you should notice is that the, so here in the case of boron, it has two energy levels. And the last one is your valence. The last the, is the outermost shell called the valence shell. And that is the number contained in its final shell. Um, and this again is your ground state. Okay, so this is your electron configuration in the ground state. If we look at aluminum, it's completely filled the first shell at two. Right, We can hold two in the first shell. It has eight in the second shell, so that's completely filled. And the third shell is not completely filled, but it has three total electrons. But we, our question was asking us about calcium. So calcium, notice we have two, eight, eight, two. So let's go back to that question, and we're going to write that in. So what is the total number of electrons in the second energy shell of a, carb, a calcium atom in the ground state? So we're copying our electron configuration from the reference table. We had two, eight, eight, two. It's asking us the total number of electrons in the second energy shell. So this is the first, the second, the third, and the fourth. So in the second shell, we have eight. As an electron in a hydrogen atom moves from the second principal energy level to the first, the energy in the atom, if 
an electron is moving from the second level. So if it's moving from um, n equals 2 towards n equals 1, right? The nucleus is here. What's happening to the energy? So if it's coming in towards the center, your energy level is decreasing, right? Our energy levels are higher as we go outwards from the nucleus. So when you're, it's excited, it moves outwards to higher energy levels. And when it comes back to the ground state, we are losing energy back going in towards the nucleus. As an electron moves from the ground state to an excited state, the potential energy of the atom. So if we're moving from ground to excited, the energy is increasing. When an electron in an atom of hydrogen moves from the second to the first principal energy level, the result is the emission of... So remember, you're emitting energy in the form of light. So here, in this case, it's energy, and it's in the form of light. Which electron configuration represents an atom in an excited state? Our first level can hold two electrons. Our second level, second shell, can hold eight electrons. Our third shell can hold 18 electrons. The rule is that it fills up, that electrons fill each energy level from the center moving out. So it completely fills a shell before it moves up to the next level. So if we have a shell that's not been filled and one has moved out to a higher level, that tells us our atom is in the excited state. So for two, two, the first one is filled, the second one is not. We don't have anything though that's, that's moved out without filling an inner shell. Two, two, one. Okay, so our first one is filled at two. The second one can hold eight, but we have one electron that's come outward from there. Okay, so let's move to the next one. Now two, eight, we have filled the first and filled the second. So this one is not excited. And now two filled, eight is filled, and one is partially filled. So the only one that we have that has, um, is in the excited state is right here. So this in the ground state would be two, three. Okay, it has a total of five electrons, but it did not fill in the second level before moving to the third. So this one is showing it's in the excited state with one electron in a further shell out than it should be. When electrons in an excited state fall to lower energy levels, energy is, energy is released, right? We absorb energy as it moves outward to the excited state, it's absorbing. And when it comes back in, it releases the energy in the form of light. So electrons in the ground state absorb energy and jump to outer shells, and this is the excited state. And when they return back to their stable ground state, energy is released in the form of light. What is the total number of valence electrons in an atom of magnesium-26 in the ground state? So in the ground state, we are given, on the, you'll find this on a periodic table as well, the electron configuration is 2, 8, 2. The definition of the valence electrons is the outermost shell. So our outermost shell would have two electrons. And write an appropriate number of electrons in each shell to represent the magnesium-26 atom in an excited state. Your answer may include additional shells. So in order to show this in an excited state, we need to move an electron further out without an inside one filled. But remember, we have to maintain the correct number of electrons. That can't be changed. So in this case, we have 12 total electrons. So we could, it's easiest if we work from the outermost shell. So we could do this in two ways. So we can take one away from here and add it to, to another um, more excited layer, go one more shell out. So we could say it is two, eight, and then one, one. So this one, one of these could have jumped to a further layer. Or you can also do, um, we could take one from here and add it into the outer layer. So one from here could jump out. So we could have two, seven, and three. Okay, so either of those answers would show your atom in the excited state because you have an unfilled level before it moves into the next one. You have to fill each level in the ground state before moving to the next level. And in this case, we didn't do that. So this tells you this is an excited atom. And the same thing if you had this format for this. If you have 2811, 
this layer did not fill before moving to the next one. So either of these would show this in the excited state. And that concludes this section of notes. See you next time.